Hi everyone, my name is Leili Seyfi. I'm an associate professor at the University of Birjan. I'm here with Selin uh, Gario Brennan, co-chair of ELC 2023. Hi Selin, welcome. Hi Leili, thank you so much for doing this. I'm so happy to be here and I'm so happy I get to discuss with you. Thank you so much. And I'm glad to have you here. I have a few questions for you. So please introduce yourself and tell us how did you get involved with entrepreneurship? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Celine Gahal Brennan. I use the pronoun she, her, and I'm a faculty engagement librarian for business, a French campus and education at the University of Alberta. And so University of Alberta is in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So up north uh, for most folks probably watching here. Uh, and I'm also in my role, co-lead of our library's entrepreneurship and innovation team too. And so I feel like I've always been drawn to entrepreneurship just because entrepreneurship is really uh, interdisciplinary and inherently interdisciplinary and my background is really interdisciplinary too. Uh, my first career was in theater and then retail management and then when I was doing my MLIS I actually did a combined MLIS so master's in library and information studies and an MBA too and I found myself really applying business principles to non-business areas. I think that's something that a lot of entrepreneurs do is apply applying business principles to non-business areas too. Uh, so since I did my graduate degree, I've been a librarian in many different subject areas um, for a couple of libraries. And I also became more and more involved in business librarianship at our campus and kind of became de facto business librarian. So in this role, I helped many entrepreneurs. And then I was tasked with uh, the creation of our library's entrepreneurship and innovation team, where I've worked with many colleagues to create this team and co-chair this team. And we're really working to create a robust and efficient service model for this team. And so in doing so, we've had a lot of partnerships with folks on campus. Uh, so that's other units that support entrepreneurs on campus. And we're doing workshops and consultations with entrepreneurs on a regular basis. So that's really uh, my full journey into entrepreneurship, as you can tell, something I'm really passionate about. And a thread that has just kind of held true is just this idea of it not just being for business students, it really being for everyone. Um, and how do we apply great business principles or other principles to areas that might not traditionally be involved with entrepreneurship? That's great. That's great to know, Selin. You are doing a wonderful job, I would say. Oh, yeah, and <laughs> uh, my next question is uh, that in your uh, idea, how libraries can position themselves in entrepreneurship ecosystems? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a really good question. I think that we have to, when we position ourselves in ecosystems, we really have to position ourselves from what we do best, right? And I think we are information professionals. We are research professionals. This is our expertise. And so I think that there's a few things. Like I think one is really honing in on the value we bring. And I think we can bring evidence-based information to entrepreneurs so they can make better decisions. And I think that's one big thing we can bring and really position ourselves within that. Another thing that I think we can really bring is also the fact that we are interdisciplinary. I feel like that's going to be the theme for this chat is that we are interdisciplinary. And so there are less silos and less barriers to working with others. And I think that often with entrepreneurship, really cool ideas come together at this intersection of different disciplines and different topics, different academic fields too. I also think that um, on campus in a way, libraries also feel this kind of community um, need, right? Of this need for community space as a place to gather to. And I think that's something that holds true in public libraries as well. I, I worked in public libraries for a while too. And I think really aware of the space that libraries occupy as a public space, as a place where people can come together too. 
Yeah, thank you. That's that's really uh, interesting to know uh, about that. And Celine, uh, tell us about like how your library, like you are working in a university at the University of uh, Alberta. So, how your your library is supporting entrepreneurship services? Yeah, for sure. So I think it's really interesting. It's an interesting question because. Uh, before the creation of our entrepreneurship and innovation team that the library had, we were still, even though it wasn't formalized, we were still supporting entrepreneurs in all kinds of different ways, right? And I think that's where it was a little more siloed, where a lot of people were helping entrepreneurs one-on-one, -on -one, right? And so this often became things like helping people with market and industry research, or even helping people find articles to make these evidence-based decisions to move their business forward, to make these really important and impactful business decisions. So I think there was that information part of it. We also at our library have a great 3D printing service, and we also have a digital scholarship center with a lot of new tech too. Uh, so visualization walls, um, different kinds of uh, laser cutters, printers, things like that. And I think that really helps a lot of students um, with the tactile nature of entrepreneurship. And so I think there's a few different ways we attack it. And that's not even talking about our team, right? And so I think that is in itself a really interesting one. And then our team really, what we're doing is we're trying to um, educate a lot of our students and faculty and staff about uh, how they can use library resources and how they can use information to their benefit as entrepreneurs. And then I also think that uh, we are also trying to be part of the larger communication strategy and conversation around promoting an entrepreneurship uh, culture on campus, I would say. And then finally, another thing we're doing as a team too is trying to be those connectors, right? Uh, because we have a lot of contacts across campus. And so trying to connect and bring people together too. And I think when we talk about information as librarians, it's so important to think that information goes beyond our databases and our physical resources and our electronic resources, but they're also the people and the network you have too. So when does it become really useful for us to refer students that we're talking to about entrepreneurship to someone else, right? To another unit on campus that supports their type of entrepreneurship too. Yeah. Variety of services actually you are providing for your community. That's 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 wonderful. And Celine, could you share with us information needs and practices of entrepreneurs? Sorry, uh, repeat that. Uh, could you share with us information needs and practices of entrepreneurs? Oh, information needs and practices. Yeah. yeah. Yes, of course. Sorry, I just I feel like I just cut out there. That's always the always the struggle with technology, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, so this is really interesting because we recently for our campus, we also we tried to base all of I've been talking a lot about evidence base. We try to base all of our decisions on evidence as well to move forward. So we just did a really big needs assessment of our community. And so what was included in this needs assessment was a survey and then uh, mostly with entrepreneurs. And then we also did interviews uh, with entrepreneurs on campus, as well as people who support entrepreneurs on campus, and then also uh, decision makers. So people in positions of power on campus, they're all involved in entrepreneurship. So I think there was really uh, interesting and robust data set that we kind of gathered from that and that we're looking at to create services as well. And so a few information needs that we really find for our, and I'm talking about our campus, but I think we can kind of generalize to other ones, is that the need for market and industry information is really, really high for students. Another need that we definitely saw for students is the need for, uh, the information need for patents 
too, which is a really interesting one, right? And so that's a type of knowledge that I think uh, librarians can really help with the searching around that too. But there's also that law knowledge that we can't advise them from a law perspective, right? And so that's a really interesting one. So I'd say market and industry information as well as uh, patent searching are really important to the students on our canvas. Another really interesting one, which is one that the library can help with the information side of things, but we can't necessarily help with all of it is the funding side. And so I find that we've got a lot of student entrepreneurs who are really, really uh, looking, have a huge information need when it comes to searching for funding, right? And so that's a place where the library, our library doesn't provide funding for entrepreneurship. That might be the case in other locations, but that's a place where we can really help guide people and do informed referrals to where they can go to get that support and that help. And that's where the campus partners and community comes into play. That's really great. That's really impressive uh, things that you are providing. That's great. And Celine, as a co-chair of ELC 2023, what do you hope the ELC conference in November will accomplish? Sorry, Lily, you cut out again or I cut out. Can you repeat that? I question? think, yeah, internet is like, you know, uh, it's uh, kind of... As a, oh, a co-chair of ELC 2023, what do you hope uh, the ELC conference in November uh, will accomplish? Yeah, and I love this question. This is a great one. And I want to say also, like, I've been kind of focused in this first part of all of this about um, really about what I'm doing on my campus. But I also think that where I've really gained knowledge and gained um, skill in this area is through communities that are larger than just my campus. And it's been a couple of years now that I've been working with ELC. And I just have to say, like, it has been such a welcoming community and so amazing to work with folks like you, Lely, from around the world, really, and gain new perspectives on entrepreneurship. And so I think that Really, as we know, the theme for this year is refresh and refocus. And I think that this gives us a really great way to get back to the basics type of approach, right? And so really focus on what are the good building blocks of entrepreneurship, librarianship, but also making sure we meet the future, right? And making sure that we align it with trends that are important to the communities we serve. And so with this kind of back to basics, this refresh and refocus approach, I really want this conference to be good for all skill levels of entrepreneur librarians, to be good for novices who are new to this, as I was a few years ago and I found ELC and I just kind of fell in love with the community and the whole element of it, but also really good refresher and kind of that refresh for experts, right? And so for people who have been in this field for even longer than I have, right? And so I think that's really one thing that I really hope that we can achieve with this is really spanning that gap of um, being good for novices, being good for experts, giving this really solid base to both of them. Another thing I'm really hoping is I really hope this will give a forum uh, for expanding our knowledge as library professionals about the diversity of entrepreneurs there are out there. I think that this diversity is so rich and is getting richer by the day. And so I think this is good for us to understand our communities too. I think last but not least is I think with entrepreneurship, I want to inspire and give library workers tangible solutions to problems that they and their community are trying to solve, really given their contexts and criterias and limitations, right? I think we all live and work through specific limitations. And I think it's really important in all of this to think about what can inspire us, what kind of innovation can we take on? What kind of entrepreneurial spirit can we take on to solve uh, problems and challenges that we come across? Thank you, uh, Celine, and I hope so. As you mentioned, uh, 
this ESC is really welcoming community and it was really uh, for me like from Iran also like you know a very uh, I would say very great a community and learning community and exchange of idea I learned a lot myself from being as like uh, for two years I have learned and achieved a lot a lot from this community yeah thank you and any other thoughts or experience you would like to share just feel free I think I just want to say if you're hesitant to put in a proposal just do it if you're hesitant to join us just do it come join us um we are so so happy and thrilled to have people interested in this and i think the richness of our community only gets richer the more people we have who participate and the more variety and diversity of thought that we get in these sessions so this is my call to action to all of you is please submit a proposal please save the date and attend with us. And then I just want to also close by thanking you, Laylee. I have learned so much from you too and just from being able to work with you. And I really appreciate this opportunity to uh, chat with our community. And I really appreciate that you're putting these uh, interviews on. So thank you. My pleasure. Thank you Ooh, too, uh, for accepting my invitation. Thanks a lot, Celine. Thanks.